Hello, and welcome to the Kosh. I'm your host, Timber Smith. And once again, like every week, um, Kosh listeners, I am excited to connect with you again, share some things with you. Um, this week, once again, I don't know how I, I am able to find these amazing guests, but I am lucky enough that I do find amazing guests week after week, and I hope um, you all appreciate it and uh, find it interesting. Um, This week's guest is, and you know what, Uh, I... I've said I was going to try to do a better job at this. I said, you know, when I when I get my guest, I'm going to do I'm going to start when I see a name in there that I'm not 100 percent sure how to pronounce. I'm going to ask them how to pronounce their name and I'm going to phonetically <laughs> write it out so I can make sure I'm, I don't be slaughtering my guests names. So in this case, I forgot to do that. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say our guest's first name and I'm going to let her say her last name. All right, so our guest this week is Stephanie Gildenvan. Gildenvan, okay. Actually, I think I would have gotten that right, perhaps. I'm not 100 percent sure. It, it, you know what? It's a in in the moment. There's a lot of pressure. It's 100 percent okay, and this is like the story of this last name that I have. Um, I used to be called Mrs. G when I worked at North High School. Oh, and most people just don't want to go there with my last name where they switch the letters around and they do like I see here, G-L-Y. Um, they really don't like a G and a Y next to each other. So yeah. Just interesting learning about humanity here. I think uh, the name Mrs. G is pretty gangsta. I kind of like that. It was a pretty I, I, I found it very affectionate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, Stephanie, um. Can you please share a little something about yourself and uh, what is your connection to the cash? Yeah, so I just recently did the math on this because I had to do something for uh, grad school. Um, I've been here for 24 years now. I came to Oshkosh in the 90s to study under Dr. Grine, study music. Um, So I played flute. I was awful at flute as a child. And then I just kind of got this idea that if I practiced, I could get better. Um, and, I, and I did, <laughs> and I really came to love it, and I saw that it could take me to college, and I was the first person to go to college in my family, and um, I got the benefit of like playing flute for a, a variety of professors, and I really, really enjoyed Dr. Grine, who still lives here to this day. A lot of people hearing this probably can uh, know Dr. Grine, um, both of the Grines, And it was just a great uh, study. So I came here to study music. I did not graduate with a music degree. (laughs) I graduated with a music minor. Bruh. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like every student that goes to college. I was about a half a semester away from a music degree. (laughs) So um, went into human services. And from there, I went into AmeriCorps Vista. And I see you're wearing your AmeriCorps hoodie right now. I am. I definitely was part of AmeriCorps. Yep. And so that's what really got me to stay here in Oshkosh was my AmeriCorps experience. It was at Jefferson Elementary School. And I just came to love the neighborhood, the families, and the community. And I, I never thought that I would stay here in Oshkosh. I thought that I'd be out in Oregon, the Portland area. And I fell in love with the city. I get that. Uh, yeah. Um, when I first came here for college, if you'd have told me uh, 30 years later, I would still be here in the cash. I would have been like, not, nope, probably not. Yeah. I would have been somewhere in a major metropolitan area back in Milwaukee or something of that sort. Um, but there's something about this place. There is. So I got a question. Uh, I want to I want to learn a little bit more. So can you share it? Does the VISTA program still exist? It does. So that's Volunteers in Service to America. And it was its own program and it got put under the AmeriCorps kind of umbrella of programs. Okay. And what do they do? So it's poverty eradication. So their whole goal is basically like a, a domestic Peace Corps. And there's programs all over the United States. There's programs right here in this community. And the program that I was part of was um, family community partnerships. So you work to build relationships through schools with families and like what's really local to that school. So we worked with area faith communities. 
businesses and others to support the school, get to know the families, and just forge a relationship within neighborhoods. That sounds amazing. So um, do, what schools, uh, do you know the schools uh, that it still exists in? I don't know if they are. I don't know if that program still exists even, but okay. what's kind of unique about Vista is, is you're, you're, there's not a team like you have for AmeriCorps. Usually right. there's a cohort in an AmeriCorps program. With right. Vista, is you're plopped into a neighborhood and yeah. given yeah. poverty wages and you're told to go and, you know, whatever with the mission of that program, eradicate poverty and build up that community in that neighborhood to be better because of it. That's amazing. It's so cool. And like I said, when you're in university, there's a pretty strong town gown separation. It, it can be. You don't it, always get to know the community. No, no. A lot of times uh, in Oshkosh, it's definitely, um, I noticed this. Um, I didn't really realize this until I worked for UWO. Um that like there's this electric force field between um, what uh, the people of the town or the city and the and the university itself like uh, it's this invisible force field as if they don't necessarily think it's part of their city too. One of the things I saw break that down when I was in college was the local music scene. So I studied music, but I also was around a lot of people that were just in different gigs and bands. And we had such a live music scene here in Oshkosh, all the way up and down Main Street. I remember like the Globe back in the day, um, El Goma Hall now, um, uh, the New Moon, all these places just had constant live music happening. Right. And, and we still have that here today, but... That live music got students out, and it got a bunch of people from outside of our community to come here. But a lot of people that were local to our community, I remember meeting them like 20 years ago in some of those venues just listening to music. That is true. I um, I have met a lot of people a long time ago, and uh, it's very funny how you rerun into them. And I always have the... Uh, I don't know if it's the privilege, the luck that uh, with with the name Timber, uh, people do not forget that. And they, <laughs> hey, Timber, I, I've met you before. And it's, uh, you know what, but it's a warm feeling. It's yeah. always a good feeling uh, when that happens. Yeah. And it's been neat to see how. So, again, when I was in college, I didn't have a car. So I, I explored by foot and. I didn't really even know that Menominee Park existed until probably like two, three years into college. Um, I think that's a lot different now based on like what I see when I drive, walk through that area because I live right down here. But Main Street has really changed a lot and it's gotten so much more active and has a lot more diverse kind of um, stores and stuff like that. So it's, it's neat to see how our community is starting to be a place that a lot of different people want to come and and just visit walk up and down the streets there was a Walgreens where there's a park right now right do you remember that I remember that I also remember where uh Main 100 that used to be the Greyhound station yeah I used to work at the Y so I would walk past all of that from my like college housing and there were big piles of coal where there's apartments now we've really changed a lot (laughs) I I definitely um I'd, I'd like to I'd like to give a shout out to whoever our planners are and the people who've been involved in these this transition is particularly of our downtown. I mean, that's amazing stuff that has happened over the course of, of uh, several decades. Yeah. And I think it just keeps building on itself like more and more people want to be downtown and no doubt. Coming out of COVID here, like we have to do what we can to help support all of that because a lot of those businesses just didn't get that business uh, for for at least a year. Yes, we got to support them. Yeah. All right. That was uh, that was awesome. Yeah. That was a great intro, and we we haven't even gotten to the first segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first segment. What in the world is going on with? It's your opportunity. You start off with that phrase and finish off with something that's on your mind. Yeah. So I. I think like public spaces is the thing that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, so right now I mentioned I'm in grad school. I also work full time. What, what program are you in? I, I'm in the master's of public administration. So nice. MPA program and I'm in my last semester. So Bruh. I'm so <laughs> excited to have some time back. Um, 
but it's a really great program and we can talk more about that but I don't have time to get out and go all over the place and our vacations and such like have just been so much smaller uh, and more frequent and I've really come to love Menominee Park the trail systems that we have, the new waterfronts that we have for walking and biking. Slow roll has taken advantage of that. I love, love, have you been on any of the slow rolls? No. It's the slow, it's a slow bike ride with like 200 of your closest friends. I've seen it. Um, you know, I'm a huge, if you've listened to past episodes, uh, you know, I, I celebrate Menominee Park because I was a person that even though I've owned my home toward, uh, near the neighborhood, for over 20 years, I never used to go. Like, I didn't go until more recently, um, really, COVID. And and just take the time to walk through it. And, and it was one of those things that one day it dawned on me. And I said, there's people, you know, I'm lucky enough to live by this amazing resource. And um, there's people who spend a lot of money to live near resources like that. And that walk if you've never walked the trail of Menominee Park and just walked by the bay, walked by the the um, lake um, and and the fields, uh, the ball fields and the zoo, like it's just, um, I think it's good mental health food. I agree. Like what it, kept you from it? Um, you don't realize what you don't realize. Yeah. Right. Like. I, I wasn't in that space of taking time for myself to appreciate, um, just appreciate my surroundings and the place that I lived. You know, I, I was I was doing what um, I think a lot of us do. I was caught up in the grind. I was caught up in working, caught up in being a parent, caught up in just the everyday grind of life and not taking that moment to say, you know, um, Part of the everyday life is to appreciate your surroundings and, and appreciate what what is offered to you. And um, this resource, a free resource at that, that is amazing. Um, just never thought about it. And then I started walking it every day. And oh my, and throw some headphones on. And then the people, the people in Menominee Park um, are fantastic. Um just a lot of good mornings, a lot of smiles, um, a lot of fellow dog owners, um, just warm, uh, a warm feeling. And, and watching some of the activities that happen on the water also, just fantastic stuff, watching uh, people launch for the tournament and going to some of the events like the concerts in the park. Um, like, it's just such this resource. I And... I am sure I am not the only one who has ignored this amazing resource. So, well, like I said, I didn't even know that it was part of the city when I came here to study music. And, you know, when you're in college, at least when I was, your head is down. You're literally living in the basement of the AC playing your instrument in a very concrete like wall <laughs> for years. That's what your life is, is school, school, school. Um, but when I like got out and just needed space away from roommates or whatever and started walking the city, I, I learned about it. And, you know, this is kind of I'm getting dating myself here, but we didn't have the cell phones and the Google Maps and all that to kind of like survey your surroundings. Like the only way you knew about it is by driving around or walking ar around. So um, what I love about uh, the park and the water that we have here, too. So I live on a street that. I'm not by the water, but I can see the lake as I'm driving down the road to my house. The water is different every day. And what you can see across the, the lake is different every day. So you get like this different picturesque view of your environment. It's just really neat to observe like daily changes and seasonal changes in that. This is true. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, my what in the world is going on with is what in the world is going on with this lottery? You know, I'm just going to say right now, I just checked, and, uh, you know, when this podcast uh, will be produced, uh, maybe somebody will have won it or it will be bigger. But right now, Powerball is sitting at $545 million. And I had heard, I found this out 
um, actually for my wife, she had a conversation with uh, the gentleman at the gas station because I don't play the lottery typically until it gets to these hundred hundred million and plus points because then I'm like, hey, I know I'm not going to win, but you definitely ain't going to win if you don't play. So I got I got to at least try my luck. Right. So um, they have started, you know, they used to have twice a week that they did the lottery drawing. But now they've gone to three times a week. And I didn't know that. But no one's won since they've done that. Hmm. And I'm like, I don't know how to feel about that because that just feels like are uh, are they trying to draw more money? I kind of like the two times a week because I like the build. It gave me several days to dream as if if I was to win this five hundred and forty five million dollars. So the three times the frequency is too. It's short. It doesn't let you dream. Doesn't let you dream well. Yeah, okay. you, know, you can't come up with your game plan. <laughs> um, so you know, uh, but didn't find out about that. But nonetheless, uh, so. What in the world's going on with that? Yeah, I don't have anything more to add. I don't. I also don't. I've never played the lottery. Um, I don't have anything more to add. That's interesting, though. Hey, well, all I can say is is um, it is it a waste of money? Likely, but it can that, be fun if people get their fun out of things, and it's a healthy fun. Yeah, it's look. It's two dollars of big dreaming. Yeah. You know, I give my two dollars and I take those several days and I dream, what would I do? And yeah. it feels kind of good, even though, uh, as you can tell, I've not won the lottery yet. But you never know. One day may be my day. And you know what? And what I keep telling myself is, why not me? Why not me? It's going to be someone. It's going to be someone. That's right. <laughs> that is facts. Gotta keep that dream alive. <laughs> keep the dream alive. All right. On to the next segment. Next segment is word phrase association. What comes to mind when I say these words? Uh, we typically do the same words, but I did change a few up. We started this time. I, I decided we're, we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, first word, food. Uh, so I think anyone that knows me would typically think I'm going to say tacos or nachos, which is true. Bruh. Yeah. Um, but Tom Yum, I'm clearly late to this game. Tom Yum soup is amazing. If you haven't had it and you're at places that have it on the menu, uh, Little Siam is one of them. Basil Cafe is another. So good. You mm. got to try it. It's okay. warm. I like the creamy Tom Yum. So it has like coconut milk in it. Um, warm, spicy, tangy, delicious, amazing hot soup. Oh, I did. I did. I, yeah, I don't know about the time. Yum. You're going to have to break this down. And where's Basil's Cafe? It's up in Appleton. Okay. Little Siam is in Nina. Okay. Um, and it is, so it's like a hot and sour soup, but not. <laughs> so I, I'm probably like really like committing a crime here and describing it. But it is spicy, probably more spicy than most. Uh, it's more than Wisconsin spicy. Let's just say that. Well, Wisconsin spicy is ketchup. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little garlic. <laughs> <laughs> Ketchup garlic. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so it is spicy. It has uh, mushrooms, tomatoes, and sometimes it has like uh, chicken or shrimp or tofu, depending on your desires. But it's delicious. It is so good. Seriously, make it a point this month to order Tom Yum Soup. Okay. And that, yeah. you need to visit Basil Cafe in Appleton. All right. Um that sounds like something that's going to have to happen. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to Little Siam. Little Siam. All right. Shout out. Okay. Cocktail or beer? Uh, hard cider. Hard cider. Yeah. A good dry hard cider. Like, is this a is is this a homemade cider that's or is this like um, Mike's hard cider. <laughs> um, so I think Michigan and Minnesota have got their game a little bit more together than Wisconsin on the hard cider, but I think Wisconsin's starting to get there. And I've heard that there is a Oshkosh local hard cidery that is opening. Yeah. I haven't tasted it yet, but I want to. There is, and um, there's a shout out. There's somebody that I do know that is part of that. Shout out to my man Doug. Um, yeah, we, look. Okay. What what is it about the hard cider? Um, number one, it's good. <laughs> uh, 
I like a dry hard cider, so it's almost like a beer. I like some of them that have some of the hops in it, so it's a good, bright, it's just bright and refreshing. Uh, Island Orchard up in the Door County area, also a really good hard cider. Uh, yeah, I just really enjoy hard cider. Okay. I think I would like to explore hard cider. You have not had this yet? Not something that isn't mass produced and in a bottle. Okay. Um, I definitely suggest checking out Wagner Market. They have a good variety of hard ciders there. And uh, there's some Wisconsin ones there. Okay. I would go with a drier one unless you like the sweet stuff. I don't like the sweet stuff. Okay. I, uh, how do you know what, does it say dry on the label? Yeah, they usually have a scale somewhere on the label or it'll just say dry. But, okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's bright and refreshing. So if you like that in uh, an adult beverage, I do suggest you try some. Okay, that sounds like a field trip to Wagner's Market, Yeah, which I love that place already. Um, those brats. Another piece of that booming downtown that we have. It's really fantastic to just walk or bike down and yes. Yes. Did I mention brats. The, those brats? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite flavor? <laughs> uh, it's the it's the mango. Um, it's uh, habanero mango that and the red, white, and blue when they do the red, white, and blue. Okay. Um, I've done the gummy bear. That's nice. Um, wouldn't think that a gummy bear and a brat would be good, but it was yummy. Um, I and 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 my wife likes the Bloody Mary ones. So there, there's a series of them that you know. You know what Wagner's Market? Always. Shout and out to you. This uh, Norwegian girl here will also say the smoked salmon that they have is really great. Oh, yeah. I haven't had that. Yeah, so it's in their grab and go cooler. Okay, I'm on it. I'm learning today. Yeah. I like this. Okay. Streaming. Hmm. Um, I've been doing a lot of work in moms lately on Netflix. What? I, 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 this is a new one. I think I've, it's out of Canada. Uh, okay. Number one, I'm not a mother. Uh, but the struggle of women trying to make ends meet and trying to balance all the things in the world is real. And it's a comedy and it's just good to laugh about it. Okay. It is good. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. What are We're, you watching? Right now? Um, look, I'm not going to lie. Uh, right now, I don't really control the TV in my house. Okay. What I do is I just, I can come and plop down and, and get into anything. So my house uh, TV watching consists of right now, um, I... There's always the possibility of a reality show, typically uh, Below Deck or uh, Housewives of whichever county in the world you want it to be of. Okay. Um, then there, me personally, and then there's always the possibility of Lifetime movies because let's just face it, they're, they're good. I yeah. mean, they're horrible as far as it making sense, they don't make any sense. And you're thinking to yourself, why would you do it? It's like watching a horror flick where you ask all the questions like, why are you running there? Yeah. You can't run faster, faster than that. But sometimes if you need a good cry. Uh, well, no, they, they just, I don't know what it is about lifetime movies, but I, I challenge anyone out there in the Kosh listener land to put on a lifetime movie, even with 15 minutes left, and try to turn the channel. Because you can't. The crazy's too good. You can't. You got to do it. And then the last thing that I always watch, which isn't the season right now, but I just saw a commercial that is going to start up in October, which really makes me excited. I love Christmas movies. I am a sucker for Christmas movies. Uh, Hallmark Christmas movies in particular. I ain't got no shame. You can talk about me. Don't judge me. But Christmas movies, I just like happy movies. I like happy endings. So, you know, a Christmas movie always is going to guarantee you that, like, there's going to be, Santa's going to come along, he's going to fix the couple up, and then it's good. I'm super excited for the Julia Child documentary to come out. Uh, so I've done a lot of watching Julia and Julia. Okay. Um, I love anything Julia Child. I got to go see her kitchen in the Smithsonian. Oh. It's just so cool. Like, she's just, she was cool before she was cool. It was cool before she was cool to be a cook. And then she was cool, and now she's even cooler. So it's just, um, I love just 
people bringing their full person into who and what they are, and she's just a great example of that. All right. Um, shop local. Yeah, so uh, the co-op is one that just comes to mind for me here, and I think it's going to be part of my shout-out as well. But um, number one, it is local. I love that we have the co-op. But number two, it also sources a lot of local. So it's shopping local, and it's also supporting a lot of local businesses that I didn't even know existed, producers that are out there. And I'm just so excited that it is here to this uh, as an actual storefront that you can walk into. Um, a lot of years went into making that uh, that community initiative uh, a reality, and I'm so proud of our community for doing that. I like the co-op. Uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite purchase in the co-op so far? Ooh. Hmm. I'm really liking the grab and go that Doug's working on there. It is. It's changed how I have meetings with colleagues or people in the community. We'll go have lunch and then sit out and have that or have coffee there. Um, so grab and go, I think, is one of the things that I've been really enjoying lately. I They, they have this soap. <laughs> it's this brown soap. Yeah. And I'm picky about soap. I'm picky about my skin. You know, don't want stuff that dries out the skin. You know, it comes with the tan. Mm -hmm. the tan, mm -hmm. there must be good maintenance so the, so the skin is nice. And, and they just have this really nice soap. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and I know it sounds small, but to me it's meaningful because sometimes, you know, um, buying like just everyday soap, um, like, Irish Springs and all that stuff, that stuff will, and coast, that will dry your skin out. Yeah. So. Isn't yeah. it neat what, like, local people can do? Yes. I love it. I love it. Okay. Events. So I haven't done this much yet. Again, I'm in the world of work and school, but live music, just live music, period. I want to see more of it. I want to see it back in our community and Local music. Local That's music. Well, I'm going to go local music in the sense that um, there is, it's coming to us locally. And that is Ludacris and Nelly coming to the Oshkosh Arena. I can't tell you how long I have been waiting for a concert like that. And now I've got two in within one month. Yes. Will I be there? Yes. Will That's I go to awesome. both? Yes. I am excited <laughs> about that. You know, as Nelly would say, it's getting hot in here. Yes, it's going to be great. I am excited about that music. Yeah, that's awesome. I just, like, I almost, like, come to tears at this point when I see that there's, like, live music in places in our community because it's just, it's just, it feels good. Not even just the sound of the music, but the sound of, like, people clapping, applauding, being together. It's just, I miss it. I miss I miss people. I miss seeing them, which is kind of back to that like public spaces thing. I love going through that park almost every day. You get to see families getting together. You get to see celebrations. You get to see it all. And I miss that about like that live band. You see the people you don't get to see otherwise. You meet new people. So I, I just love live music. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Volunteerism. Hmm. So I've been thinking about this one a lot because come December, I will have a lot more time on my hands. And so what do I want to be involved in? I had to carve off a lot of my work in the community when I decided to go into grad school. And I'm looking to get back into it. So I think maybe there's other people out there that, you know, just want to get involved somehow and they're not sure where to start. I think that's huge. Like, um, yeah. I t my wife, uh, we have this conversation. You know, I've been lucky enough where uh, people come and find me. <laughs> and they're like, hey, would you like to? And I'm like, sure, if I can find the time, I would love to because – I, I love this community and therefore I want to I want to add value however I can. But, uh, you know, for other people who maybe they've lived here their whole life and it's just, you know, they're living and they're working hard and it's but they want to help, too. And they don't even know where to look or what's out there or, you know, how do you give back? And like it sounds easy enough. 
Yeah. But it's not necessarily as easy as you may think to find those opportunities. So right now I'm the editor for our neighborhood associations newsletter. So every other month or so I get all the articles that go into that newsletter that gets dropped off. And it's a little way that I can contribute in a way that it fits into my time and my schedule right now. But like our neighborhoods, our neighborhood associations, like we have these really great developing neighborhoods that are wanting to kind of support themselves as a neighborhood and like we have Stevens Park because of the neighbors here that work to fix that up and make it great like it is now so I think even if you're not sure how or where to get involved I do think like figuring out what you care a lot about and what you're passionate about is a way to start otherwise right in your own neighborhood like how can you get involved there um but there's a lot of like, I feel good when I'm giving back to other people, and I want that to be, I'm excited to get back into that after having my head in books for the last two years. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that this one's here on this, this podcast, volunteerism, because it's, it's what I'm excited about. Okay. You ready for the next segment? Sure. Okay, next segment. The Kosh Hidden Gems. And this is an opportunity for you to share a hidden gem uh, that you enjoy uh, in the Kosh that others, sometimes maybe you know, but you don't know. Um, what do you got? I'll say the Weawash Trail. And I think a lot of people know about this, but I don't know if they've been on it. And so back to my college days when I really just needed to get out of the house with, you know, a bunch of five roommates in a in a house. Oh, you didn't have that traditional big house, uh, five people, everybody on top of each other experience, did you? Oh, I totally did on Saratoga Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> While Jackson Street was getting torn up um, back in the day. And again, I didn't have a car. So I learned about the trail. And I used to walk from Saratoga Ave all the way over to back behind in the day it was called Fratello's, to where that oh. trailhead was. All right. And walk that trailhead for, like, miles down the road. And when you're on that, you get to see a bunch of people fishing along, like, Butamore. Um, There's trees that have plums that grow on them that you can just, it's right on the trail that you can, if you're into foraging, you can <laughs> harvest a bunch of really delicious plums. Um once I got a bike and you could go out further, like you just get to experience a whole different community. Um, you know, Bare Bones is now out there along that trail. There's just, there's people on horses out on the trail. So like to me, it's- There's like, people with horses out there? Oh yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. And okay. you get to meet the people with the dogs. A lot of times they're out there every day. So you get to know them. Um, the trail, it's great. It's great in the winter even. And I'm an outdoors person. Summer is actually my least favorite season of all the seasons. I'm, Bruh. <laughs> I'm a fall winter girl here. Um, get out on the trail if you haven't been. It's beautiful. If you have kids, it's a great place because it's kind of contained, you know, so they can run and have some fun. Uh, it's just beautiful. Have you been? Uh, no. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of people that haven't been out there and it's growing further into the city. So it's easier to connect into it. Okay. Um, but there's also, if you want to get out further out of town, you can drive your car and walk different like lengths of that trail. I'm looking for um, new walking paths and more, um, more opportunities to walk like that's I'm finding a lot of peace in walking. Uh, it's the exercise. Um, Feels good when, when the Fitbit says you've hit your ten thousand steps a day, um, but I, I'm 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 enjoying walks, so I would love a new trail. Yeah, definitely check it out. I I do like the length, the the segment that's right along the cemetery as well. Like you just get a really good um, part of the water and the trees. It's very beautiful in the fall. So. It, Highly suggest getting out there. Also, the next one out that's right along the Lake Butamore and everything is also really, really awesome. The only one, I, I mean, I've walked um, that bridge. I don't know what they call that where you go over the bridge. And, yeah. And that that's cool. That's part of the trail system. So, okay. yeah, you go over that and you keep going across 
the bridge, um, you'll land on one of my favorite parts of the, the trail system, but it goes out a lot of miles. So the, the slight downfall of the trail is it's an old rail bed, so it's not circular. It's one way. You walk one way out and you walk one way back. So I, I am... If it could only be circular, that would be awesome. But I understand that railroads just didn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's just, it's fantastic. I love it. Get out there. Get out there in different seasons. You'll see different things. You'll experience the trail in a different way. Okay. What's the cash need? Mm-hmm. So my background is organizing. <laughs> uh, and I've heard from a lot of people in the city I think it's two things that really just kind of stick out. One is housing that's affordable for people. So rentals that are, that are affordable for people um, and people that have real life incomes, people that have real life households and different sizes of households. Right. So it's so expensive. And, you know, we have a lot of really great things in the city, the quality of life in the city overall is really fantastic. So how do we make this an affordable place for people to live and not just work? I didn't, um, I'm not going to lie. I didn't realize what like the cost of rent had gotten to, you know, I've been in my home for 20 plus years and um, just on the whim of going out there and kind of looking and seeing, um, my wife has this dream of owning, uh, of moving to a condo at some point in our retirement future, which we are nowhere near. <laughs> Let me just say that. Bruh. And, um, but it did make me at least go out there and just look and rent. I was like, whoa, like I just didn't know because I've been so unattached, but you know, um, like it's not hard to just have a two bedroom and be at over a thousand dollars a month on rent. And I was just like, you know, maybe I'm just, maybe I've just gotten old, but that, that sounds like a lot of money if you're not making that kind of income like that, that's eating a good chunk. Yeah. And if a third of your income you shouldn't be going over a third of your income for housing. That means you need to be making at least $3,000 a month. And a lot of households are not making $3,000 a month. Not after taxes. Yep. And that, you know, maybe gross, but, but not net. So. So housing is one big thing. And then the other is uh, transportation. And so we've come some way with public transit. Um, specifically, I'm talking about public transit, but even just having sidewalks in front of your home. A lot of places in our city don't have safe ways for people to even walk. But public transit was another area that I had heard from a lot of people in our community. And the first thing was um, kids being able to get to school without having to pay for it. And that was like, you know, a huge shout out to the people that were involved with making that finally happen two years ago. And I just heard the numbers are like, way beyond what they estimated that students would be using that free ride for. And it's not a free ride. It's paid for. The point is kids shouldn't have to pay to get to school. Right. And when you have multiple kids and we are consolidating our schools and schools are further away, we need to be able to get our kids to school. And I'm so proud of the work that was done at the city, at the school, and with a lot of our community and families Mm -hmm. to make that happen. It's just awesome. You know what I like about it? Um, I like having our young people learn how to do public transportation to take the stigma yes. off of public transportation. You know, there's a lot of stigma associated with it. Like, I didn't own my first car until um, I actually came back from uh, serving in the military, and, and my dad got me a nice little uh, a nice little hoopty, as we used to call them, uh, a $200 uh, vehicle he bought from my grandfather. Uh, but I mean, but prior to that, when I lived in Milwaukee, the bus is all I knew. And the bus still, uh, to me, was a great way to get around. You don't have to think about much. Um, you know, it, it, and it, to me, it felt pretty safe. 
So, I mean, I, I like the bus system and I, I still encourage it now. I mean, especially in, in the Fox Valley region to be able to do the public transportation that's offered. It is so high quality. Um, I've had the opportunity to actually um, tour um, Valley Transit uh, in Appleton and um, to see the buses. And I mean, right now these buses are amazing. They even have air cleaners built onto the bus wow. to make sure that the air is sanitized for the riders yeah. right now during COVID. And I, I, I'm blown away. So like, I love the idea of our young people being given access and, and to get used to public transportation because there's just a lot of ways where if there's all these other costs going up and maybe you don't necessarily need a car, which comes with car insurance and car repair, and maybe it's a place you can save money if public transportation can get you to and from your career. Um, and even just for the sake of uh, the environment and congestion, it, it, there's just a lot of positive opportunity in public transportation. I, I think in a lot of bigger cities, public transportation is like the, like, equal denominator that we all like it, it brings us together uh, right. a lot of people have to use it because there's no other options right um and there's just transitions in our life that are going to require a need for public transportation and so there's no um you know certain groups of people that need to be using it we all need public transportation sometimes yes. it's you're a kid and you need to get to school um my husband uh, his neck was broken in a car accident that we were in. Actually, today's the anniversary of a pretty uh, awful car accident that we were in. And uh, he couldn't drive a car for a year. That mm. was the only way that he could get around. Bruh. Yeah. So this whole we need transportation, so many older adults um, that don't want to drive or can't drive, this is a way that they can get around. And if we build up that uh, confidence and capacity and we have systems that can meet our community's needs that's all the better for everyone and the community on a bus is amazing I don't know if you've ridden a bus uh, recently but people know each other those bus drivers are such dedicated public servants that facts it is just amazing um these services that we have and public I, transit I have definitely um I, I recently took the time, and in, in Appleton, what they do is um, they actually have what's called a pit crew program where you can get trained to teach others how to catch the bus. Yeah. And I took the time to get pit trained because I think it's important and because I want to, if, if someone needed to know, you know, to take the stigma off, to, to, to make it comfortable, to make it familiar. I was like, you know what? I'm about that because I totally believe in buses. And, yes, I've definitely taken the bus here in the cash also uh, just to when I was at the university to get to the university. You know, I can walk down to the corner, catch that bus to the to the uh to the um, transfer station and, and then jump on a different one. And then I'm there and it was fast and it was easy and I didn't have to think about it. And so I am a huge advocate. That's great. And that's uh, that pit volunteering. You can do that here in Oshkosh too. So connecting it back to how do you get involved? If you want to learn how to ride buses or you already know, and you just want to help someone kind of have that confidence in riding a bus here, there's people that are wanting to learn how to do that. And it's their, the, the fear of the unknown or not knowing how the, those routes and stuff work that um, you can help people connect to more independence. And I think that's a great thing. Um. And I think the one part of it that some people don't talk about, and maybe this would help others get more on board with it, is um, there's an economic development piece to it, giving people access to things so they can utilize their dollars in, in spaces, Yeah. right? And um, so I, I just think there's a big opportunity there. Um, okay, next segment. The Naughty Slash Heroes Corner is your opportunity to put somebody in the Naughty or the Heroes Corner, not necessarily a person. It could be an organization. It actually, whatever you want it to be, it is. It doesn't even have to be either or. So what, what's what's on your mind? Yeah, so I guess I'm still not over my love of the co-op. And I just really want to like recognize 
So in part, I was part of the way, way in the beginnings pieces of the co-op, like part of the co-op before it was a co-op kind of a thing. And then we had to hand off leadership to other people because after, at least for me, six years of working on this thing, I had to do other things in my life. And people, new people came in and picked up, picked up that ball and especially in the last few years, did a lot of heavy lifting. Right. So there's, there's a lot of people that were involved with that. And um, just kudos to our community for meeting that need and, and the leaders that help lead that way. Like the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and the, the hard work, you don't always get to see. And, and, and the point isn't to always just get kudos for the work, but I just want to put a huge kudos out there building things is a lot harder than tearing things down. And so when a community comes together and creates a thing, that is, number one, is beautiful. <laughs> but number two, the leadership and the people that went into making that happen, um, just so proud of the city of Oshkosh and the people in Oshkosh to make that happen. Agreed. <laughs> All right. So, we are at that time. It is Topic of the Week. So, I think this is what I introduced a little too soon. No, no. <laughs> hey, look. It, we flow with it. Okay. No editing, no nothing. Right. We just, we, we make a show. <laughs> yeah. So, public spaces for me is a topic of the week. And in part, it's like what brings community together. And to me, it's also, so half of my job at, I work at the health department Half of my job is to work on substance use. The other half of my job is to work on this thing that we call social connectedness or belonging. And to me, public spaces are what brings community together. And they're also created very intentionally. So Oshkosh has done a lot of work to create these really great public spaces. And also, like, what does the future of that look like? Like, what do we need? Where do we need uh, more of these public spaces and how are we finding ways for people to have those spaces be their own so even as we are changing as a community how are those spaces meeting the needs of the people that live in our community and how are we planning right now for the future of what that might look like who's doing that planning so it's a lot of questions rolled into the topic of the week okay what are your thoughts on this um I, I mean, there's great importance. Uh, uh, until you told me what your topic of the week is, I guess I never thought about it in the term of public spaces, right? Um, but they're so important. Um, it's what does make community. Um, it's the things we share. Um, the places where we actually get to see each other um, in our authenticity, uh, and I don't know if people get that. Um, like, and what I mean by that is I'm, I'm, I've got this thing, uh, and since you brought up belonging, I got this thing about the reason sometimes it's so easy for us to other each other and put each other in categories or not connect or not understand who your neighbors are is because there's these silos, right? And we can easily get into the routine of getting up, going to work with a bunch of people like us. We live in a neighborhood with a bunch of people like us. Mm -hmm. We may worship with a bunch of people like us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what we're doing is we're missing that opportunity to find out, like, the people who may not directly be living exactly like us are still us. Is We share so many of the same needs and... Um, how we manage our families and, and what we want professionally and personally for happiness. Um, but you don't know that if you don't get out the silo. And so I do think these public spaces are when you walk through the park and you see these families and you're able to see, oh, 
Yeah, that barbecue smells good like my barbecue. That's right. Like, uh, I love walking through, I'm not going to lie, I love on the weekends walking through Menominee Park, and, and I see Middle Eastern families, and I see Hmong families, and I see just people as a whole. And you know what's even more, uh, what's even better? I love it when I see modern families that are a mix of everything and everyone just doing their thing and hanging out in the park and getting out of the house and spending times and there's little kids running around and moms and dads are chasing them down and dogs and everything, right? What you just get to see is our commonality and humanity. And I just think that grounds us and it reminds us. But when we live in these silos, we can forget real quick and it's easy for us to paint each other in those us and thems. That's right. And and we can even end up doing that in these public spaces themselves, because I remember times in Oshkosh, across the Fox Cities, where in my community organizing work that I did, there were consistent challenges with those public spaces. Anything from taking down the basketball hoops because they didn't want certain people playing basketball, to taking down the volleyball nets because they didn't like certain people playing volleyball. There was an instance where in public parks there were soccer fields and uh, groups of Hispanic families would come after church to play soccer and someone didn't like that happening. They would literally bolt the goals together in the center of the field so that those families couldn't come on Sunday after church to play soccer in a public park. That's crazy. This has happened. (laughs) This has happened. So these public spaces were intentionally created by people at one point, right? These Mm -hmm. parks didn't just happen. They were intentionally created, maintained. And if we're not intentional about what we're creating for our future and who's welcome in those spaces and who's celebrating those spaces and who gets to decide on those spaces, those welcoming places that are supposed to be places of commune, belonging, celebration can be places of othering where people aren't welcome. So as intentional as it is a place of welcoming and belonging, it could very well be intentional places for othering. And um, this is work that I'm very passionate about and I'm very excited about our investment in all these public places. I'm talking, when I say public spaces, I mean green spaces, parks, trails, the waterfront that we're investing in. And we do this as a community to make our community better, right? Right. And it attracts people. It does. And so we need to be welcoming of the people that it attracts. And it's so beautiful going through Menominee Park and seeing people that I don't live next to um, and seeing that the shared values, family coming together, celebrating happening, multi-generational, just it's exciting. That's the Oshkosh I want to live in. And I want to know that everyone's feeling welcome there. You know, my feeling is, um, you know what? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think it's the Oshkosh we do live in. We just happen to also have those people who um, think it's their job and they think that they have the authority um, or the power to control who these things are for. And, and, and it's not the majority. I agree. But the few can be awfully effective. It only takes a few to ruin it for the rest. And so there's something to be thoughtful in that. And I know we're using terms that not and everybody may know. I think everybody can understand what it is uh, to belong in a created an environment where all can belong. Um, another term we're using is othering. And to keep it short and non-academic, uh, basically <laughs> othering is the opposite of belonging when you make people others and outcast them. Yeah, More or it's less. racism and classism and ageism. So whether it's we don't want a skateboard, you know, park here, or we don't want, um, you know, the basketball hoops here, or we don't want, um, you know, this is a playground for kids and not other people. Like the othering is just using and theming people. It's the drawing a line as if those people are so different and their sense of being and their values are so different from me. But if we actually got to know each other, we we have the same values and 
And these public spaces are ways that we can get to know each other and welcome each other. And it's the beginning to building those relationships that make a community great, that make a community the place you want to stay, not just a place that you're passing through for your job or your school or because you're visiting. Right. And there's an, I think the thing that isn't talked about enough sometimes is there's a socioeconomic value to that to creating that kind of environment in that city. Um, Something that's probably more important now than it has ever been and more obvious than it's ever been because of the pandemic Um, and what it's going to look like coming out of the other side. Um, But that's a whole nother podcast. Well, and speaking (laughs) of some of the stuff with the pandemic, like even public spaces like our library and the, the, heating and cooling space that it offered. So when the pandemic hit, my colleague and I had to do um, some work in our community to find ways for people to not freeze to death in the winter or uh, have heat exhaustion in the summer. And those are different groups of people. The library served as that place. People would go there, older adults in their apartments that didn't have air conditioning would go to the library to cool off. And that wasn't an option during, during the pandemic. So Um, other places became those spaces but again the intentional efforts had to go into creating that so just this in the world where everything seems to be so polarized and complicated and sometimes rightfully so complicated because we have work to do as a community these public places and spaces I think a lot of us are celebrating them and are really excited by who is coming to them and Again, back to it takes intentional effort. It takes investment. Like the waterfront took decades to get there. Someone dreamed about having, you know, not piles of coal and wanted to have a waterfront that attracted people, that helped support our local businesses and celebrated the rivers and waters that we have, right? Right. It was intentional. And so how do we keep doing that? And how do we get more voices into that process? And like, what does Oshkosh look like 20 years from now? Isn't that kind of exciting to think about? It's it's super exciting to me because I knew what Oshkosh was 30 years ago. Right. And it sure wasn't this. Right. <laughs> Isn't that great? It is great. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Oshkosh, the people of Oshkosh, uh, the businesses, the the people who were forward thinking, um, they, did, they did. They really did a great job. Yeah, I think even like having places like Wagner and um, the co-op coming in to offer places to buy food and it's accessible. They're on like it's where transit is. It's where sidewalks are. There's where trails uh, meet kind of our, our community because do you remember back in the day how many grocery stores we used to have? Like there used to be Cub Foods um, right. right where facilities for university was. Yep. There was the new cops that came in that was there for like a hot flash and then closed down. Right. You know, we had all these like our community is getting better and I'm excited for that because there was a time where I wasn't sure. Um, We were losing a lot and I didn't see a lot building. And, you know, I was um, kind of young in my life and trying to figure out what does it mean to be part of a community and be part of, you know, a city and come from a village of 450 people. So Um, This felt really big and complex and like what kind of community are we building here? And I'm really loving the direction Oshkosh is going. Agreed. All right. Anything else you want to say about public spaces? I think if you don't know them, go find them. I kind of want to do a park tour, like maybe have a list of all the like city parks and like kind of check them off and just visit them because I'm surprised by some of them that I've never even seen, even though I drive past them. I didn't acknowledge them. So just just that. And our county park is pretty cool. It's really beautiful out there. County park's awesome. I, I, I give the Martian, county park. marshiness and all the, like, I just, I love our county park. So if you haven't been, I think my challenge to the community is go find their public places. And again, that Walgreens, it used to be a Walgreens you know, no, nothing against the Walgreens, but it's a park now and it's beautiful. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the, what do they call it? The Grand Opera Park? Well, uh, it's the, the sundial. The sundial. The sundial. Yep. That's where the Walgreens used to be. Yep. Um, 
you know what? That I think that rolls right into uh, us. Uh, you know, um, as I like to tell you, week after week, uh, the Kosh is a work in progress. Uh, it is truly a work in progress. I listen and uh, to everything that comes in, all the emails I personally respond to. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. We want to keep improving. Um, this is our community. This is about us. Uh, I hope you can tell that by the guests that we always bring on. Uh, we never know what direction we're going to go into, but I'm always hoping that it's sincere and, and honest and, and interesting and gives us a way to connect and know who our people are, and, and influential people are out in our community and what's going on. Um, so please, please, please email us at askthekosh at gmail.com. Once again, that is askthekosh at gmail.com. And now that uh, Stephanie has put out the challenge, I think that uh, we want to hear about public spaces that we may not know about. So I'd uh, Put it out there. Uh, email us. Let's talk about this in the future. Uh, if I get the emails, maybe I'll put it in the podcast notes. Um, I encourage you to reach out and let us know. Let us know what you're thinking out there. Or if you'd like to us to revisit this, let us know that too. And uh, maybe uh, we will bug Stephanie since she's talked about this time that she's going to have on her hands after she is done with this master's degree. Bruh. There's going to be so much clapping happening. Yeah, there's so much time, uh, so much clapping, so much celebration when you get done with that. I understand what that feels like. Um, please reach out to us and maybe we do come up with the list of places, a checklist of things to go check out. That's actually a great idea. Should we do that? Should yes. we make it like a cash list or something like that? Yeah, just get it out there and then everyone has a list on their hands. Well, I need help. I need help from the cash listeners out to, to let us know. Yeah. Uh, mine personally would be Stevens Park. That's where I would start with because I, beautiful? I think that's a gem that most people don't know exists, but it's an awesome park and it even has a community garden in it. Um, grills, the whole nine. It's beautiful. Tennis court. Shelter. Shelter. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's fabulous. Um, and I, and I bet you it's one that a lot of people in Oshkosh don't know exists. Yeah. I think there's several of them and I'm excited to see them. All right. Okay. You know what time it is? It's my favorite time of the show, and that is shout out time. All right. All right. You got your shout outs? I do. Okay. So some of this overlaps. So shout out to the co op. Just going to keep doing that. Shout out to a solution. So I spent several uh, months now at Solutions listening to people in recovery on how we can support people in recovery in our community. And Solutions is such a community within our neighborhoods here in Oshkosh. So if you don't know about Solutions, get to know about Solutions. Um, they're just doing such a fantastic job at supporting people in recovery and cultivating community there. And shout out to all the BIPOC organizers that are out there that are trying to live life, get through COVID, care for their community, and rally for racial justice. <laughs> Yes. Yes. All right. Um, my shout outs. Uh, let me give a shout out to, uh, you know, whenever I do the shout outs, I always ask my wife, hey, you know, uh, you know, who should we shout out this week? Just because I want to get a perspective uh, more than what's in my mind. And the one thing that came up is um, the fact that right currently at this time, we do not have a good chicken place in town. Not a good fried chicken place, like fried chicken. And uh, but something popped in my head and it said Pizza Ranch. Oh. Order Pizza Ranch's chicken. Is it good? It is fantastic. So shout out to Pizza Ranch. That fried chicken was amazing on point and those mashed potatoes taste like kentucky fried chicken mashed potatoes from back in the day with the gravy so a big big shout out to pizza ranch if you don't know now you know go check right. it out um shout out to my dad my dad recently uh got a little surgery uh actually it was big surgery um he's doing really well uh love you pop appreciate you and love you mom for taking care of pop <laughs> <laughs> and um Big shout out to my man, uh, Sean Fay. Uh, 
he's he's my one of my partner in crime and he um, recently uh has moved back to the Kosh area um he was he was uh out in Idaho while we were working remotely so now he's back here in the city can't wait to go hit some herd games with my man so we can start booing and people will look at us like who are these people that boo at the game it is us Uh-oh. Wait, 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 look, it's not bad, but I mean, it's sports. We got the right to boo. It's, someone's got the right to boo. Someone's got the right to boo. So that, those, are, those are my shout outs. And last piece of business for this episode is the parting words of wisdom. So Stephanie, what do you got for us? So... I think the theme that you can hear from me here is community and uh, fall is the most beautiful part of the year here in Wisconsin. I think like get out and find a way to celebrate community or if you kind of been down and out because you know it's been a tough couple of years here find something to love like go find a thing that you love in your neighborhood in your community. That's my parting thing is community. I love that. That felt good. How do you feel about this episode? Was this good? This is good. Thank you for having me in your home. This is just a really great, it's a great conversation with neighbors here. It is. It's the cash. 